Hi everyone, it's Mr. Senti, and today I'd like to talk to you about the respiratory system. Yeah, the respiratory system's pretty crucial. I mean, it's taking in oxygen, which we need to live, and it's breathing out carbon dioxide as a waste gas. And so, this particular video is an introduction to that uh, system, and we're going to look at the upper uh, respiratory uh, pathway in general, and uh, there'll be a separate video um, getting into gas exchange and how that occurs in detail. And so, hope you enjoy the video. Hope you uh, are able to to learn something. And so, um, what I want to say about the respiratory system right out of the gate is that again, you're probably familiar with the fact that uh, air can come into our uh, our body through our nasal cavity or through our mouth. And both of those, it really doesn't matter. Both of those connect in the back of the throat known as the pharynx. And then we're going to go down the trachea, which is our windpipe, and then that's going to branch off into the right side of our body, into the right bronchus and the left bronchus. And then those are going to branch out into smaller and smaller bronchioles, uh, and then ultimately into these air sacs. And so here we have a right lung and a left lung, two lungs. And so this whole respiratory system is about gas exchange. That's kind of the main event to exchange oxygen for carbon dioxide. So we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out carbon dioxide. And you're like, that's it, gas exchange? Well, yeah. The truth also is that it cleans the air too. There's a lot of mechanisms that we'll look at in the video where we talk about how the air is filtered and it warms and humidifies the air. And uh, so there's some subtleties to this as well. And so gas exchange, you can ask this uh, question, um, you know, what's the point? Uh, why do I need oxygen? And so that, that's a huge question. And so um, I'll attempt to, to respond to it uh, briefly. And so, you know, if you if you think about it, it all comes down to a cell. And we sometimes we refer to this as cellular respiration, where we have a cell and we have each and every cell of the body is surrounded by blood vessels. And so in the blood, we have red blood cells and those red blood cells are moving around in, some, in the tiniest blood vessels of all called capillaries. OK, so here we have it like this. Here's a capillary. Here's a cell. And so what, what are those red blood cells doing? They're, they're carrying oxygen. That's right. And oxygen is really important because oxygen is going to then diffuse from an area of high concentration in the blood to an area of low concentration inside the cell. And ultimately what the cell needs with that oxygen is uh, it needs to use it in the mitochondria. If you're familiar with the biochemical pathway of cellular respiration, you'll know that glucose, which is uh, burned for fuel in our body for energy, uh, diffuses also across. And so glucose is broken down in the in, in the cytoplasm and then ultimately those remnants go into the mitochondria and combine with oxygen and, and are burned and produce this high energy molecule called uh, ATP and we need that and this is called cell respiration and as a as a product of that carbon dioxide is produced so CO2 and so this is a gas right there and of course this is a gas as well oxygen coming in to the cell and so the cell needs to get oxygen and it needs to get rid of carbon dioxide and so carbon dioxide then diffuses from high concentration in the cell to low concentration in the blood. And so in a separate video, I will talk uh, in detail about that process of gas exchange. And you're like, well, how come you're mentioning it now? Well, because this is the, the heart of what we're talking about in terms of respiratory system. It all gonna, it's going to come down to the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. And the reason that we need oxygen is to supply all of our cells with the energy that they, that they need to live and do all the things. Like, for example, if this is a muscle cell, we need the ATP in order to get the, the myofibrils to contract. And so this is what is, what's happening. And then carbon dioxide is produced travels into the blood and then where is that going that's going to the lungs of course um, to be released and then oxygen came in via the lungs and so th and that might be obvious but it doesn't just zoom to the lungs it has to go through 
the nasal cavity. And so I want to talk about that, uh, the anatomy a little bit about uh, this whole process. But ultimately, down in the blood or wherever you are, what we're talking about, when I mention the word diffusion, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page with this, when I say diffusion, see these purple balls represent the gas. If they're in high concentration over here, say that this is oxygen. If it's in high concentration over on this side of the cell membrane, which is a phospholipid bilayer, and over here it's in low concentration, it's opt to diffuse. And so let me emphasize it. So oxygen will diffuse from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration across the cell membrane, provided that it can. Okay, so the movement of gases in the, in the, in the respiratory system uh, occurs ac across these surfaces, across the cell membrane, and it, and it is basically uh, diffusion that's causing that. Okay, and so what's totally fascinating, and I don't know if you saw this coming, but what's totally fascinating about the respiratory system is that it's very much like, if I can use this analogy, it's very much like an upside down tree. Okay, and so I'm not sure if you've ever seen an upside down tree, or it looks a lot like a root system. Yeah, you know, that might be a better analogy, truly. So here's the cool thing. So oxygen is coming in, and it comes in through our mouth or through our nose, but ultimately it's going to come down our windpipe. And you may know that to be the trachea. And then ultimately, this is where this kind of breaks down. There's two branches called the right and left uh, primary bronchus. But, it, but nevertheless, there are these air tubes that travel down and travel down and see how they branch and branch smaller and smaller and smaller. But what's fascinating is that you know, this increases the surface area, it doesn't. So this is all of this would be, you know, the lung right there. And so this is uh, the air passageways. Okay, so sometimes known as the bronchial tree. The bronchial tree is bringing in. And you're like, well, that, this is pretty impressive. And it is. This is tremendous amount of surface area, but it gets even more. Check this out. At the very terminal end, at the smallest bronchials uh, uh, in this bronchial tree, it doesn't just come to a point, but what happens is that, let me assist this, it comes to little air sacs. And so these little air sacs further and tremendously increase the potential surface area as well. So it's like these little air balloons down here at the very end. Those are called alveoli air sacs. And so that is where gas exchange is going to be taking place. Gas exchange. Gas exchange takes place uh, right here in those air sacs. And so the respiratory system's all about getting the air in, getting the air out. It's all about filtering the air and transporting the air and then exchanging the air. When I say air, uh, you know, air is an interesting <laughs> concept in the fact that, you know, you think, well, air is oxygen. Eh. The, the truth is oxygen is only partially what air is. It's actually only about 21% of air is oxygen gas. As it turns out, that's something of, of, of interest. The majority of gas is nitrogen gas, which is about 78%. So here's a little bit more of detailed of this, uh, this woman here. And, and here's her nasal cavity. Okay, so this is behind the nose, this cavity. And here's the oral cavity, so the air can come in either direction, but nevertheless, it's gonna be coming in and reaching the back of the throat, irregardless, in, which is called the pharynx. Then that's gonna travel through our voice box. Our, our voice box is called the larynx. It's called voice box because there's some vocal tubes, uh, vocal cords inside there, and they're protected by this cartilage um, uh, surrounding. And so then it's going to travel, the air is going to travel down the windpipe or, or the trachea. Notice how they're protected by these rings of cartilage right there, that hyaline cartilage. And then it branches into the right lung and into the left lung right there. And notice the heart is right in the center of this whole thing. Now this is referred to, this whole upper part is referred to as the thoracic cavity. That muscles the diaphragm. Separate video on breathing, which is totally interesting as well. So... Once we branch off into the, the, the right and left bronchus, then we get into smaller and smaller bronchioles right over here. 
And so here is uh, a, a branch coming down right here, right here, and this is filled with air, okay? So the air is coming in. And so what's fascinating is, um, you know, speaking of the heart, the heart's pumping blood to the lungs. The heart's pumping blood to the lungs, and it's deoxygenated blood. And so it's coming away from the heart. Away from the heart is an artery. So it's coming, and it's blue because it's deoxygenated. And so this is called the pulmonary artery. It's away from the heart. And, and then it branches into smaller and smaller blood vessels called capillaries. And these capillaries surround the alveolar air sacs. And this is where gas exchange takes place. So when oxygen jumps into the capillary, then it becomes red because the oxygen unites with hemoglobin in the red blood cell, which then turns it red. Now it's heading back toward the heart. And so this is known as a pulmonary vein going toward the heart. And so ultimately it's going to go to the heart, and then the heart's going to pump it to the rest of the body. So the respiratory system is all about filtering the air, transporting the air, and exchanging. So these are the three main functions of the respiratory. Filter it, transport it, and exchange. So what I was just describing was exchange and transport. You're like, what about the filter? Well, we'll get to that in a moment. So exchange a little bit more. So this is the air sac right here. And so this is where the oxygen is of highest concentration. So it's coming in. Here's the bronchial. Here's the alveolar. Notice so much more surface area when you have an expansion like this as opposed to it coming into a point, right? And so see, uh, oxygen then goes into the blood and then carbon dioxide goes from the blood into the, into the air sac and then we breathe out the carbon dioxide. And so this is where exchange takes place in the alveoli. Cool word, gas exchange in the lung in the alveoli. And so the rate of diffusion is proportional to the surface area. If you have a tremendous amount of surface area, you can get a tremendous amount of diffusion occurring and this is good. Okay, and so this is a cool uh, sort of digitally uh, produced image of the terminal bronchial right there. And of course, this is the pulmonary um, artery coming away from the heart. And notice how it's sort of purple right here in this capillary bed because oxygen's coming across and then it turns totally red because uh, gas exchange is occurring here in these air sacs called the alveoli. And then this is the pulmonary vein going back toward the heart right there. And so this is um, what's known as the respiratory surface. And these, these cells tend to be extremely thin. So these alveolar air sacs, if I were to, to illustrate it like this, are made up of our thinnest cells imaginable. They look like little pancakes, or I should say crepes. They're called simple squamous, which allows for the, the maximum uh, ability for air to travel across them uh, very rapidly. And so let's get into some anatomy here of the upper respiratory uh, tract. And so, you know, physicians can specialize in this sort of upper respiratory tract. Um, nostrils right here uh, comes up into the, the nasal cavity. Uh, these are your, uh, your conchi right here. This is your, you know, uh, the superior one right up here, the, which is Interesting, this is where your olfactory epithelium is located right here at the top of the nasal cavity. And then the air comes in like that. It's coming in, coming in, coming in like that. It passes back behind your uvula. And then again, air can also travel in through the mouth as well. And so both of these come uh, to the throat or pharynx right in here. Now, what's interesting to note is look at this structure right here. This structure is called the epiglottis. And this epiglottis, when you're eating food, the food comes down and it presses upon it and then it, 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 it closes right there. It falls down and so it prevents food from entering into the trachea. This is the trachea. But it's right in here, that opening, uh, right in this area right here is called the larynx. And this is your, your vocal cords, which are shown here in white right there. And then behind or posterior is the esophagus. So the, es the upper respiratory uh, is all about your nose, your nasal cavity, the sinuses, which are um, sort of pockets uh, in the skull, and then your pharynx back there. Okay, And then the lower respiratory tract 
uh, in, involves your larynx, as I was just referring to, where the vocal cords are. The trachea itself, which is the windpipe. Notice there's the C-shaped. I say C-shaped because they don't go totally around. The C-shaped rings of hyaline cartilage right there that protect the trachea because the trachea is right here. It's vulnerable. And then it branches into the right lung and the left lung and the bronchial tree. Okay. And then here's the lungs. So again, uh, more anatomy here. Um, you know, in the front of your your skull right here, right, which is right above my nose or my frontal sinuses right there. And so here's the nasal cavity. Uh, here's the hard palate right here in the mouth, the nostrils leading to the nasal cavity. Here's the oral cavity. Uh, the larynx, again, houses the vocal cords, sometimes uh, known as the Adam's apple because it because the cartilage sticks out a little bit like an apple. Uh, here's your here's your trachea. Esophagus, part of the digestive system. Epiglottis, which is preventing food from traveling down in your trachea. Pharynx, which is the back of the throat. Soft palate, because it sort of uh, culminates in the uvula and it doesn't have a bone in it, so it's rather soft. And then here's your bronchial tree in the right lung and the left lung. Notice how the right lung kind of curiously has three lobes and the left has only two lobes. Interesting. So when the air enters, and this is one of the functions of the respiratory system to filter and to warm and humidify. So as the air enters in, uh, into the nostrils, it's filtered by the hairs. Not only the, the sort of macro level hair in the nose, but microscopic hair as well, cilia. And so it's also humi humidified by the, um, the goblet cells releasing mucus. Okay. And then it's warmed as well because there's a lot of blood vessels in there. And so the nose is a combination of bone and also cartilage, elastic cartilage. And so uh, the air is filtered. And so, again, I was mentioning how oxygen is only 21%. And so when the oxygen travels in right here in your nose, this is a person lying down. Um, it travels down back here and then or it can come in as well through the oral cavity right in here. And then it'll travel travel anterior. This is the esophagus here. Uh, here's your epiglottis right here. I'll highlight it, your epiglottis. It's called epiglottis because it's on top of the glottis. The glottis is literally the opening to the trachea. So it's a hole, the glottis. And so here's your um, a closer look at the, the nasal cavity and these na nasal uh, conchi right here. And so these help to, again, increase surface area. Uh, there's lots of uh, cilia on the pseudostratified ciliated columnar helps to moisten, filter the air, uh, warm it, if you will. So it's all, all, always a good idea to breathe in through the nose for this reason. And then you, these sinuses are pretty neat too. And so I mentioned the frontal sinus uh, as well, but we have these maxillary sinuses right here, just uh, left and right of, of the nose. And then we have the ethmoid and the, and the sphenoid sinuses as well. And so these are air-filled spaces of the, they help to uh, keep the skull light, but they're also uh, lined with mucous membrane and again, cilia, uh, and help to, the air can go into these sinuses, of course, and they sort of resonate and, and sound and influence the uh, tonality of our voice. So as I was mentioning, they yeah, this is a cool x-ray of the sinuses right here. And they reduce the weight of the skull and they, uh, they uh, act as a chamber, which uh, affect the quality of, of the voice. <laughs> so kind of interesting sinuses are neat. And then this is a great uh, light microscope photograph, histo histology look at goblet cells, which are here. These are the pseudostratified ciliated columnar. You can see the cilia that are protruding right here. And you're like, well, what's the whole point of this? Well, the point of it is that if mucus is being secreted right in here inside the nasal cavity, okay, and this is all through not only the nasal cavity, but all the way down uh, in the trachea as well, and also the, the upper uh, bronchial tree as well. If mucus is secreted, what that's gonna be able to do is trap all the dust particles that we're, that we're inhaling or maybe even some, some germs, some bacteria. 
And then the ciliary action of this tissue will then beat it in an upward direction and get that mucus to come up out of the, the respiratory tract and then ultimately will swallow it. You're like, swallow it? What's that gonna do? Well, then if we swallow it, then that's gonna be carried to the stomach and then the gastric juice, which is low pH, is gonna destroy most of the microorganisms in that mucus. So this is very important, helps to keep the lungs clean. And so here's another diagram of that. Here's the pseudostratified ciliated columnar cells, which are part of the mucosal layer. And then goblet cells are making the mucus and then particles are trapped in it. So the nasal cavity leads to the pharynx, as I was mentioning. The glottis, again, is literally an opening. And it, it's flanked by these two white structures called vocal cords. And what's totally interesting is when the air comes out of the lungs, when we're exhaling, the vocal cords will vibrate and that will create sound. And so that's literally how our, our voice is generated by these vocal cords vibrating the sound. So it's pretty neat. And so um, here's again, more anatomy of the upper respiratory uh, pathway. The frontal sinuses, which are right up here again, Here's your, uh, here's your nasal con uh, conchi right here. And so, you know, you can get into this su superior on the top, middle, and then inferior to the lower one. Here's your olfactory, olfactory epithelia right here. Here's your um, sphygmoid uh, sinus right here. Um, the pharyngeal uh, tonsil is sometimes called your, your adenoid back here. Here's the opening of the auditory tube, which is, and again, you might be familiar with, then extends all the way into the eustachian tube, which then connects to the middle ear of the ear. Uh, here's your palatine tonsils right here. Here's your lingual tonsils. These are lymphatic tissue, which help to protect. Here's the epiglottis. Here's the opening right here uh, called the glottis, and then your vocal cords are right here. So this whole area right here is called the larynx and then the air then travels down into the trachea. Pretty cool, okay? So let's, let's go. Now, I'm gonna emphasize the vocal cords because they're, they're quite remarkable. Again, uh, there, there's cartilage in the front, which is protecting, and then, uh, which is sometimes called the voice box, and then it houses a pair of vocal cords, and these will vibrate. And when they vibrate, the, the sounds high-pitched when the cords are stretched really tight, they're going to they're gonna vibrate at a high pitch. And then when they're um, less tense, they're going to be uh, vibrating a little bit more slowly and create kind of a lower uh, pitch in terms of this. And so let me actually take a break uh, from, whoops, let me take a break from this and show you, I have something here that you might be interested in. This is an uh, uh, endoscope uh, looking at Inside that this is inside the body in the larynx. These are the real vocal cords right in here and that opening that I'm pointing at is the glottis and so a Physician can actually put this in uh, And the person can actually speak while the while the scope is in there Surprisingly, and so now we're how about this we're traveling down the trachea And so this is what we're about to talk about in a moment. This is the windpipe. You can actually see look at this you can see the rings of cartilage right in here. And then let me pause it here for a second. Do you notice how it's going um, the right and then left? This is the primary bronchi that's going down like that. Check that out. Pretty cool. And so this could be teased down pretty far into the bronchial tree, surprisingly. Okay. And so let me pause that there and let me come back to these vocal cords. This is pretty interesting here. And so here again, uh, a cartilage right here, which is protecting uh, the larynx. And then here's the vocal cords and here they are vibrating um, here. the <laughs> So this is what it looks like when, if you were to stick an endoscope down my throat right now, when I was talking, this is what it would, <laughs> what you'd be seeing uh, <laughs> probably more than you'd want to. And then again, this is going further down. So this is now, you know, into the, in down the trachea. Now we're going into the bronchial tree. Let me just, come back at that point. Let's come back to uh, where we were. And so I'm not sure if I can, of course, it's always a, it's always a risk. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, let's see what we can do here. Let's go. Let's try that. All right. Nice. And so I hope you enjoyed that. That's pretty, pretty cool. And so here's, this is where we were. We were looking inside the larynx right here at the vocal cords. And uh, here's the C-shaped rings, uh, which comprise your trachea, which is about 25 centimeters in length. And then there it is branching into the, into, into the, uh, into the, uh, into your lungs. And so here's your uh, trachea right here in the flesh as well. Pretty interesting. Now, this is not human. This is, it happens to be a, um, a sea lion, but it's pretty cool. This is a, a, a cool look at the cartilaginous rings of the trachea right there. So it extends uh, anterior to the esophagus, which is in the back of it, so, uh, is, is posterior. So it's anterior toward the front, and it goes all the way into the thoracic cavity, and it splits into the right and left bronchus. Okay, and then this is again a pretty cool microscope showing a cross section of, of or not cross section, but a, a, just a, a longitudinal cut of the trachea, and you can see the layers of it. Here's the hyaline cartilage. You, if you recognize this as being cartilage, these are chondrocytes uh, right here. Here's the submucosa, and then the mucosal layer. Now the mucosal layer is pseudostratified ciliated columnar, and that's what the PSCC stands for. There's a cilia, so this is air right over here. And then I, I thought I'd include a scanning electron micrograph of of looking downward at the uh, at the top of this muc uh, mucus layer, and you can actually see the cilia three dimensionally. That's pretty cool. And again, the whole point of this is to trap the dust particles and move them out or germs that are trying to get in. And so the trachea has all of that tissue. So under the microscope, if you were to look at the trachea, this is what it would look like. You would actually be able to see the pseudostratified columnar. But with the endoscope, you can look down and see these uh, 20 uh, cartilaginous rings, which are C-shaped. Uh, they don't go completely around. And then they branch off into the uh, into the bronchial tree. Now there's two uh, primary bronchi, one leading to each lung. And so here's the right lung. I was mentioning over here that it has that it has three lobes, and then the left has two. Um, it then it branches off uh, more and more and more into smaller and smaller tu tubes, and then ultimately into the bronchioles, which are the smallest of these air passageways. Okay. Uh, so the right lung, again, it has three lobes, and it has the superior lobe, it has, and then jumping over here, the right middle lobe, and then down, jumping over here, the inferior lobe, okay? And then we have, if we look just at the air passageway, we have the larynx, uh, voice box, Adam's apple, trachea, then we have, we branch it off right in here, which is the, the right primary, and then we go into then when it branches Further, it would be the secondary bronchus, and then if it branches even further, it's the tertiary bronchus, you like that? And then branches even further into the terminal bronchi. And the terminal bronchial uh, then uh, terminates into alveolar air sac. So check out that branching right in here of the bronchial tree. Let me just um, come back over here and show you that. This is pretty neat here. Um, this is... Um, you're going further and further down into the, let me make that a little larger, check this out. So now we're, we're in the bronchial tree. So, um, so we're going into that, uh, you know, past the primary bronchi and then the, the secondary bronchi. And so we're, we're going down further and further. And you can even see the, the glistening mucus right in here that the goblet cells are secreting this. And so this is, uh, this is kind of neat. I mean, you wouldn't be able to see this if there wasn't a light a a attached to the to the uh, to the lens, of course. But this is what air. This is like what air sees when it comes into your lungs. It's like shooting through all these all of these different passageways. It's like a labyrinth or an upside down tree. Okay, and then you could see. You know, sometimes this. Um, there can be infections here, and let's let's talk about that. Uh, let's talk about the possibilities, because I've been I've been mentioning how efficient our our respiratory system is in terms of defense. Because I was mentioning 
we have these the pseudostratified columnar and it protects us with the mucus and there's no germs that can get in but the truth is sometimes our our bronchial tree does get infected and you you may have heard of this bronchitis when there an itis is an infection acute means troublesome or really bad um, so acute bronchitis and so look at this you get some germs in here and, and then excessive uh, inflammation can occur and um, so this is what can happen so this can be treated with antibiotics and so this is what you don't want and this is why your your beating cilia are protecting you from this and then ultimately in the terminal uh, bronchi bronchial we're coming in into these air sacs and I mentioned there these are the sort of air bags of, of the lungs. They fill up and that's where gas exchange takes place and there's literally millions of them and it really, really increases the surface area. I mean, how much? A uh, hundred meters squared. A hundred meters squared. <laughs> that's pretty impressive. Okay, so that, that way we can really take in oxygen and really release carbon dioxide. And then, um, you know, this is what happens in the alveolar air sacs. And so uh, there's gonna be a separate video looking at gas exchange, but just briefly, uh, oxygen enters the capillary, carbon dioxide goes into the air. And so this is light microscope. Here's the air sac. Now, what you can't um, imagine per se is this is a thin slice, but what's happening is this is a three-dimensional structure, right? So do you see this? It's a three-dimensional sac of air, but what if you were to slice it, that's what we're looking at, these thin walls. You see that right there? And so this is what we're looking at. And then also, do you see when we cut it, we'd also be cutting capillaries too, which are the blood vessels that surround it. You're like, huh, yeah, that's the whole point, is to get your oxygen to diffuse into the blood and your carbon dioxide to diffuse out of the blood. So you have to have capillaries that are surrounding it each of those air sacs, because that's where gas exchange takes place. And so here are the red blood cells. You can see them right here. Pretty cool, red blood cells. What are they doing? They're carrying oxygen. Um, and so oxygen will diffuse from the air sac into the red blood cell, and then carbon dioxide will diffuse out into the air sac as well. And, and it's across the thinnest cells of all, simple squamous. So that's pretty neat. So the alveolar air sacs are made of simple squamous, but so are the red blood cells and so are the capillaries. So this is uh, a sort of a, a come together of simple squamous. And so finally, we're there in the air sacs and this is where gas exchange takes place. An awesome picture of the alveolar air sacs scanning electron microscope. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this introduction of the uh, respiratory system, and I hope you learned something, and thanks for watching.